seems to come down to idle a lot smoother. What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm out here today on my way to work. I gotta take care of some business. I meant to make this video yesterday, but I wasn't feeling too well, so I decided not to go out on a ride. So, in a previous video, I was showing you guys how to use R-Tune and how to unload maps and save them and put new maps onto R-Tune. So, in the process of that, I ended up actually loading another rider who has a Duke 390's map onto my bike. So he has a custom dyno tune that was built for him and I was able to receive it via email. So I'm out here kind of testing that out right now on my way to work. So what I can say about this dyno tune first impressions with only being about a mile or so away from the house is it definitely feels a little more punchy in the low to mid range uh, area. I haven't really gotten it into the upper RPM so much yet so I'm not sure how the high end power feels. I'm assuming it's probably going to feel fairly similar to uh, Powertronics base map uh, to the Race Plus map based on from what I uh, annotated from looking this tune over while I had it uh, up in our tune. It looks like whatever tuner built this map for this guy adjusted a lot of the low end areas. Well, pretty much from 8500 RPM down, nothing looks the same between this map and Powertronics map two. But above 8500 RPM, it's almost exactly the same. So it looks like Powertronics had it down packed pretty good in the upper RPMs, but what they did is they added a lot of fuel down low, a little bit of timing here and there. So it looks like what they were trying to do was make the power band a little more linear, I would say. So trying to get that early on punch of torque that this motor has and carry it flat throughout the RPM range. And it, it does feel that way. It feels very linear. It feels like there's a little more torque there. It's below 8,500 RPMs, it feels like a completely different bike than what it was before right now. So I've got to go down here and I've got to get on the highway. So I'll be able to get a little more time with the 16-2 sprocket on the highway because I've barely had any time with it on the highway except for the one previous video I made where I was only on the highway for maybe two miles. So if you guys haven't noticed, the name of the channel recently changed in the past few days. I decided to rename it to Moto Medicine. And the reason that I did that is because it's kind of a play on words with, for one, what the channel's about, which is motorcycles and things with motors and in general and then the medicine portion kind of comes into what I do for a living so I've said it before in a previous video I'm currently active duty I'm a hospital foreman in the United States Navy so I deal with medicine so that's kind of why I decided to change the name of the channel and I didn't really care to have it just my name lo and behold I've been doing this Navy thing for 11 years now a little bit over I just hit my anniversary at the beginning of this month so, life doesn't always take you where you think it is. Ooh, a little bit of debris there. I don't know if y'all heard that backfire. Yeah, this, this map actually feels pretty good. I can definitely tell it's a lot richer than what it was before. Because back there, I don't know if the, the microphone picked it up but there was a backfire in between shifts and it's never done that before, so there's definitely some extra fuel that got exploded in the exhaust. So on top of that, I don't know if you guys can also, the sound has to be really good. I mean, I'm hoping it's really good. Right now, I finally got my media mod attached to the GoPro. trying to see if I worked out the annoying ticking sound that was coming from my audio in the video I just did, which you're probably watching right now. Hopefully we've got everything taken care of. You guys enjoy the rest of that video. And so I've got my purple panda lavalier mic set up. I've got a uh, dead cat on the end of it, so the wind noise should be fairly minimal, hopefully. 
if it's if it's not that great, I'm gonna have to adjust the placement of the microphone. Right now, it's kind of tucked into my right cheek pad about midway up. So hopefully, the sound is is excellent. So just a touch on that 16-tooth sprocket a little bit. I'm doing about 80 miles per hour cruising right now, and I'm sitting at just about 7,500 RPM. So that's a good that's a good 500 RPM less than the stock hearing, and it feels great. This is basically my daily commute. I hop on the FOP or the 15, and I jump in the HOV for a little bit. I go down here, I catch the 163, which takes me to the 5, and then I cross the Coronado Bridge and go to work. It's a nice little ride, but it's, it's very mundane. I mean, there's nothing special about this. You're just cruising on the highway, minding your own business, hoping to not get ran over by some idiot that's not paying attention. power with this tune seems to be on point as well. So just in case anybody is curious about the passing power in top gear on a Duke 390 on the highway with a, I mean it's a relatively strong headwind I'm in right now. This is approximately what that looks like. So I'm going to tuck in a little bit. I'm full pin now. got a slow way down so whoever tuned this did a really good job and I'm glad that it seems to be working fairly well for my bike too I'm gonna keep this tune on my bike at this point until I get my own specific dyno tune I'm not sure if they're gonna make much improvement over this one but at least it would be custom made to my bike and I can rest assured that my bike is running hundred percent as it should so now I'm coming up on the gate for base. This is probably where I'm gonna cut the video when I edit it, and then I'll meet you guys on the way back out. Let's take a look at that uh, custom tank pad right there, still holding up pretty good. So something that uh, me and a 
fellow rider might have discovered about this dyno tune is it actually is two separate maps in that file. So apparently the owner of the tune says that map one is for more torque such as wheelies and small tracks. So the mid-range should be much more powerful and that the map two side of it is what's actually for high-end horsepower and top speed. So apparently I rode all the way in here on map two which was for the high-end power so I went ahead and I flipped my switch into map one to see if I can feel any significant difference so I'm gonna swip I'm gonna switch between the two of them during my ride on the way out and see if I can feel any differences there as well Yeah, we were, I was kind of stumped because when I uploaded this map at first, every time I would flip the switch while I was attached to R-Tune, it was saying that both of my maps <clears throat> were like identical. And I was like, why in the world do these not look different? Well, come to find out, there should have been two maps on this file. So that's probably why. Also, Apparently this map has a uh, traction control features turned on So basically the way that works from what I can tell is the motorcycle uses RPMs and uh, Speed to basically determine if the rear wheel is spinning faster than what the speed of the motorcycle should be at I haven't had the opportunity to test that and see if it kicks in and I'm not gonna force myself into that scenario either, so I'll just trust that it's there and maybe one day I will feel that. If the sound is any different than it was on my way in, it's because I moved to the microphone location a little bit. I could tell by previewing my feature of the uh, ride in that there was a, a decent amount of wind noise, but nothing terrible. Um, so I moved the mic upward a little bit to get it away from the chin area a little more. All right, let's see if I feel a difference in torque. So that felt pretty good. Let me switch into map two. Get back to the same RPM and speed and try it again. You know what? I think there is a little bit of difference. Going back to map one now. Oh, wow. Okay. Let me try that one more time in map two. Yep. It, it's, it's a little bit different. Map one, I can feel my body jerk back a lot more than I felt in map two. So map one of this guy's tune is definitely built for uh, low to mid-range torque. Just chugging along at 80 miles per hour like it's nothing. You know what I want to go ahead and ask for in the comment section of this video? I want everybody who watches this to tell me what your dream bike is in the comment section. I'll tell you mine right now. My dream bike at this point in time, and I know there's just so much to choose from, it's so hard to put a finger on. But as of this point in time, and I'm being biased because I'm really happy with my KTM right now, my dream bike is a 1290 Super Duke R. Not gonna lie. If I could have any bike on the planet right now, no money attached, I would get a Super Duke 1290R. Now that's another naked bike. If I could have a fully fared sport bike, Honestly, I think I'd go for the Yamaha R1 right now. I love the sound of the cross-plane crank, and overall it's just a very sharp-looking motorcycle. I've never ridden one, not even an R6, but I'd love to try one. And those of you that don't know, this is actually like my eighth motorcycle, I think. I've been riding since 2012, 
So I'm not new to motorcycles and I still find myself coming back to these lower displacement bikes and still having a lot of fun and a good time. I said it in my previous video, if you find yourself on a smaller displacement bike and you're not having fun, you're not riding it right. It's way more fun to toss around a slow bike and ride a slow bike fast than it is to ride a fast bike slow. Man, that map feels good. Real good. If you're getting one of these bikes and you're only going to take it on like the highway, oh look at that, that's an adventure, uh, KTM adventure bike right there, I don't know which one it was, probably a 1290 adventure, it looked pretty big. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, if you're getting bored on a smaller bike like this, find yourself like the windiest, twistiest, least busiest road around you and take your bike there and just re-fall in love with it. I feel like a lot of these people that get into motorcycling and they're like, oh, I just bought my Ninja 400 like a month ago and I'm so bored. I want a 1000 now. Like, did you even take that bike around any kind of like canyon or some tight road of any matter? And even then, if you're bored of it, if you can afford to, keep the Ninja and make it a track bike, something you can take to the track to hone your skills in. Because I'll tell you what. I'm not going to want to jump straight onto like a Triumph Daytona and go out to a track and learn how to be like some big fast track bike ripper. No, it ain't happening, man. I'd much rather either take like my Duke there or like an RC390, a Ninja 400. Hell, you could even find like a cheap Ninja 300 and make it a track bike. But learn how to control your bike in the turns. And then you'll find yourself much happier when you're on the street, your skills will hone in. Anybody can get on a motorcycle, jump on the highway and twist the throttle back and just go through the gears. You might shit your pants doing it, but you can do it. And what's gonna really make you shit your pants is when you hit a turn at speed. Like, I don't know if anybody has ever come into a turn too hot, but man, you talk about filling up your drawers, coming into a turn too hot, that's the scariest feeling in the world. And any new rider or even like some experienced, you know, amateur riders that come into turns too hot, you make the wrong move, you're going down, man. You upset the rear end or the front end and you don't know what you're doing, prepare to hit that pavement. Ah, oh, ruining my ride. We got traffic. Nothing like being stuck in a traffic light. Man, did that microphone pick up all those crackles right there? Oh, I can't say it enough. The mid-range torque pull on this tune is incredible. Absolutely outstanding. That's the first time that I've heard the fan kick on. Somebody's car stinks. I think it's this Corvette next to me. All right, on that note, guys, I'm almost home. Hope you enjoyed the video today. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed the scenery and the ride. Smash that subscribe button for me. Hit the like if you would. Leave a comment, and I will see you guys in the next one.